Hello my friend and welcome to day 42 of our Bible reading plan. We are reading through the Bible in one year together and I'm so glad that you've joined us on the journey today. I'm super excited to share some of the thoughts and reflections that I've had out of our passages of scripture for today and also super excited for God to speak to you uh, in these passages of scripture today. I believe that as you wait on God and as you carve out that time to spend time meditating on his word and sitting in his presence, I believe that God is going to speak to you so powerfully out of his word today. So um, firstly, I loved uh, just this thought out of Matthew 27. So I was reading through Matthew 27 and just saw the example of Judas, right? So Judas sells his relationship with Jesus, basically his future with Jesus. He trades that relationship and future with Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Um, it's something that Judas did and it was something that just sparked my, my thoughts to think about the different people in my life who seem to have traded their faith or abandoned their faith for different prices in their world. The different prices that the enemy has paid and prices that they have accepted to trade in exchange for their relationship and their future with Jesus. And I just wrote down some of the things that people have exchanged. Uh, maybe it was a broken relationship. Maybe it was unanswered questions. Maybe it was disappointment with the way that their life had turned out. Maybe it was the presence of pain and suffering in their own lives or in the world around them. Um, sometimes it was church hurt. Other times it was a poor witness of hypocritical Christians. Um, in some cases it was greed or lust or um, sin or the allure of philosophical arguments or worldly wisdom. There are all sorts of prices that people in my world have accepted in exchange for their relationship with Jesus and their future with Jesus. And we see um, in, in the example of Judas that Judas realized when it was too late that the price he ex had accepted, that 30 pieces of silver, was absolutely nowhere near worth the relationship that he had with Jesus, a future with Jesus and eternal life in salvation in Jesus. And so Judas realized when it was too late. And so he realized that he totally regretted it. He actually went out and hanged himself. So it was too late for Judas. But as I was reading through this passage of scripture, I was thinking about these different people who had accepted different prices for abandoning their faith in my world and just reminded of the fact that while they're still breathing, while they're still living, there is still hope for them. I can still reach out to them and share the love of God with them, share the grace of God with them, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them in the hope that they would repent, they would turn to God, they would embrace a relationship and a faith in Jesus Christ once more and know what it is to have their eternity secured in heaven. And so it was a, a reminder to me today to just pray and to seek God for the words to say, to pray for these people, to pray that something would shift in their hearts, in their lives, that God would do a work in their hearts to bring them back to him. Anybody who's abandoned their faith, anybody who's turned their back on God, to pray that God would lead them to himself in and through my life and that I would be a vessel and a tool to share the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ with them today as well. Um, I also loved out of um, Exodus chapter 9 and 10, just reflecting on this um, this relationship or this struggle that Pharaoh has with God. So Pharaoh um, is struggling with God. Um, Pharaoh, it's like this man versus God struggle that we see Moses and Aaron are doing the works of God. They're seeing supernatural miracles happen. The sorcerers are like, whoa, this is actually the finger of God. This is God doing this. And so there's people in Pharaoh's courts acknowledging God, acknowledging the power of God, acknowledging the moving of God and Pharaoh has such a hard heart that he still won't budge. He's still stubborn. He still won't give up um, control to God. And so we see that Pharaoh in this time period at this particular you know, time in history, Pharaoh would have been seen as a God on earth. He would have been seen as like, you know, 
earth god, you know, a man god. Um, and so he would have treated himself like a god and he would have expected others to treat him like a god himself as well. And so he had put himself through his, the hardness of his heart um, in the place of God. And it was this struggle of man versus God in the court of Pharaoh. And it reminded me of the struggle that we have in the courts of our lives, the courts of eternity, the courts of human history, this struggle that humanity has always had since the Garden of Eden of being our own God, of, of struggling against God, not letting God be the God of our lives, not letting God define and determine the purpose and the, the way of our lives, instruct our lives in all sorts of ways, but us sort of taking on the reins and saying, no, I'm going to be the God of my life. It was a reminder to me today of that struggle, but also of the blessing that it is to have surrendered that struggle to God. The blessing that it is to be saved, to have given the Lordship of my life to God it is the most blessed, satisfying, joy-filled, peace-filled life that we can live knowing that we have surrendered the rulership of our lives to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that God is our God. He's the God above all gods. He's the God of heaven and earth, and he's the God of my life. And when I surrender my life to him, I can live in the fullness of his peace, his joy, his blessing, his love, that satisfying um, knowledge that he is in control, that he is leading me and he is guiding me into his plan and purpose for my life and my eternity. And so um, I would love to pray over us today to pray firstly for those people in our lives that might have abandoned their faith, that we would be people who would hear from heaven what it is that we are supposed to do to reach out to them, how we can reach out with the love of God, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, how we can remind them of, of the future that God has for them uh, in salvation and in that life that he has for them in eternity as well. Hopefully believing that they would turn their hearts back to God today. And I would love to pray as well, pray for us, that we would have a reminder today um, of, of the, the beauty that it is to have surrendered to God, the beauty that it is to rest in Him where, as He leads us, as He guides us, as He controls our lives, um, the beauty that it is to know that He is in the driver's seat, that I'm a steward of my life, but He is the Lord of my life. And so I can rest in His peace, his joy and the total satisfaction that comes with knowing that God is my God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords of my life. And so I would love to pray that over us today. God, I just pray that you would help us today to hear from heaven, God. I pray as we open up the word, Lord God, you would speak to us. You would speak to us through your word, Lord. I thank you that you know the very hairs on our head. You know us intricately, Lord. You know what we need today. And God, I thank you that you are so willing and able to meet us at that place of need, that point of need. God, I pray that you would minister to us today through your word and through your spirit, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us, God. If there's people in our world who have maybe abandoned their faith, walked away from their faith, God, I pray that you would give us the words to say. I pray that you would move on our hearts, God, to help us know what to share, what to say, what conversations to start, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to pray for them, pray powerfully over their lives, God, that they would return to you to share the gospel with them, Lord God, and see them come to repentance, God. And I pray as well, Lord God, that we would be reminded today that you are the Lord of our lives, Lord God, that as we've surrendered completely to you, Lord God, you are the, the Lord of our lives. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the God of our lives. God, you are in control. We are stewards of our lives, but God, you are the Lord of our lives. And so Holy Spirit, I pray that we would be reminded of the reality of that and what that means for us, that we could live in the fullness of your blessing, of your favor, of your joy, of your peace and the satisfaction that comes with knowing that you are in control, that you are in the driver's seat of our lives, God, that you are leading us and guiding us today. God, I just pray for my friend. God, I pray blessing over them today. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to them so powerfully through this time of meditating on your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend. I will catch you tomorrow for day 43 of our Bible reading journey. I'll see you then.